Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. Day two in the books and no injuries to report, and that's good news to start with. Tight end Dalton Schultz has been with the Dallas Cowboys for four years now, and he knows that because his son Theodore is turning four years old, and that's why he paid a visit to training camp yesterday. Schultz left his first ever Cowboys training camp for the birth of his son, and now it's more cause for celebration. What is not is Schultz did not get the long-term contract extension he was hoping for this offseason. Instead, he has to settle for the franchise tag of $10.1 million. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't disappointed. Um, you know, obviously, I think we all came into it thinking that, you know, we'd be able to get a long-term deal done, and, um, you know, that's something that, you know, we push for, push for. Um, you know, they were trying to push for as well. And, um, you know, this will be the only time that I speak on it. But, I mean, just as I kind of, you know, move past that, I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm at peace with knowing that I put my absolute best foot forward. Progress continues at UTSA. The Roadrunners officially breaking ground on their $8 million, 14,000 square foot Park West Fieldhouse. The facility is going to serve as the home to women's soccer, men's and women's track and field, and cross country in a partnership with Bear County. Judge Nelson Wolf also revealed that maybe a shared baseball stadium is in the future. There's some effort underway to build one out here. There's two efforts underway. One to build one out here close to the campus, another one to build one downtown. And there's two different groups of uh, business people working, and uh, I'm not sure what will come of it. Uh, I think eventually, I may not be here, but I think, I mean, I hope I'll be alive, <laughs> but I won't be in office after five months. So I think eventually something will come together. Well, you hope he's around to see it too, whatever happens. So, All right, speaking of baseball, the Midland Rockhounds and San Antonio Missions going at it last night for the second night. The Missions had an early lead before giving it up Late in the game, the Missions had a 5-1 lead in the top of the six, but the Rockouts fought back and got several runs. Walked it off in the bottom of the ninth. Midland wins 6-5. Close, though. Yeah, wasn't bad. Yeah, better luck tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 443 and 78 degrees for now. And coming up, more on a bizarre story out of Hawaii. A woman and her husband are now under arrest and accused of living under stolen identities of two Texas children. And welcome back. It's about 446 now. A couple living in Hawaii is under arrest, accused of living under the identity of two deceased children from Texas. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an identity theft mystery spanning decades. A woman from Hawaii and her husband arrested, accused of living under stolen identities for the last three decades. Federal investigators say Gwyn Darrell Morrison and Walter Glenn Primrose stole the identities of two Texas children who died in the late 1960s. The couple accused of obtaining social security cards, driver's licenses and passports under the children's names, Bobby Fort and Julie Montague. She was my sister. The family of one of the children, Julie Montague, who died as an infant, left confused and angry. Dad and I both uh, have gone through a wide range of emotions and initially shock and dumbfounded and what did you just tell me? And we'll have much more on the investigation into who this couple is and why they were hiding in plain sight coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Los Angeles. Quick bizarre. Look. I know, huh? that is bizarre. Wow. A quick look at the roads here. We we're looking pretty good on the way into work. Uh, Friday well, always seems fun on the roadways. Uh, I feel like there's more people, but everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> it's 447. There shouldn't yeah. be anybody out there messing around on the roads. Not there? yet. We were talking about in the break about yes. that story uh -huh. and the show that was on uh, FX a couple of years ago mm -hmm. called The Americans. About 10 years ago, right? Was it that long ago? I think so. Time flies, but uh, yeah, with Carrie Russell, is spelled with a K, not a C, Americans, and it was about a couple that they were planning wow. Soviet spies back in the 80s. And so it does take some current or some events back in the 80s and, and wraps that into it. But yeah. pretty good show. If it you looked look, good. Yeah, if you're looking for something to, uh, to binge this weekend as you're sitting inside. <laughs>
avoiding, avoiding the, the heat. heat. <laughs> yes. We did squeak out uh, 100 again yesterday. Now it depended on where you were. Steph said she saw a couple of showers out there. There were one or two of them out. She's doing a dance right now over there because she saw a little bit of rain, uh, but no rain from these clouds, at least for sky watchers. Sunset was pretty nice. We should have some uh, decent sunsets the next couple of days, and that's going to be enhanced this weekend by some Saharan dust. A few clouds out there this morning, 79 right now. Same thing, Stinson, Canyon Lake, Castroville, and the humidity is up. Now we do have a little bit more moisture and that may help with a couple of extra showers around the area. But as of right now, these dew points are just putting the heat index up to 83 at Canyon Lake 82 from the airport down to Pleasanton over toward Castroville as well as Hondo. And throughout the rest of today, we will have our morning clouds around here. Temperatures will stay in the upper 70s, mid to upper 70s around much of the area. Already upper 80s by uh, late morning, 90 at noon, and it'll be sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And again, going for 100, but if we get a few more clouds, obviously it'll be like on Wednesday where, where we will stay just below it. That 20% chance for a couple of showers out there. Uh, humidity enough this afternoon to where we'll have heat index readings 103 in town and then getting pretty high down to the south. Not quite up to heat advisory criteria, but obviously you want to take it easy. Here's the satellite radar picture again going back 12 hours. There were those couple. If you blink, you missed them, but those one or two little uh, showers that uh, popped up out there and that's going to be the situation again today. But most of us will not see any rain by mid afternoon. A couple of these showers popping up here and there, perhaps a couple of claps of thunder mixed on in. But again, you can pretty much count these things on one hand and that's going to be the case today. Then after that, that's pretty much it and we're back to 100. So it's close call today, but over the weekend, pretty much sure thing about hitting triple digit triple digit temperatures. I should be used to saying that by now. And then also going into next week, it's going to get even hotter. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, 100. A few showers out there, just one or two of them. Get a few extra clouds sitting over the uh, airport. We'll stay maybe just in the upper 90s. But over the weekend, pretty much a sure thing. A little bit more Saharan dust, as I was talking about. And then going into next week, it gets even hotter. Yay, to start off the month of <laughs> August. That's on Monday, and then look at that. By midweek, we're looking at 102s, 103s later on next week. And those top numbers are the running tally of triple digit temperatures this year. Goodness. Well, uh -huh. I guess that's what we expect for August. Not so much 103, but just. Well, hotter. 97. I mean, starting uh, Sunday, we get into the, the normally highest high temperature of the year, 97 degrees. That lasts through the 16th of August. Wow, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, yeah, it'd be nice <laughs> to be back down to 97, but no, hotter than that. Okay, thank you, Mike. Well, we enjoyed the 99s while they lasted. Yeah. For one day. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> 451 and 78 degrees. And the faithful animal companions of some major DC superheroes get their own movie in theaters this weekend. How is expected to compete at the box office? Oh, what a huge night it is. Don't forget Mega Millions tonight. $1.1 billion jackpot. Here is last night's numbers. Pick three, five, four, seven. Fireball is two. And your daily four, seven, one, four, four. Fireball is seven. Cash five, eight, 15, 16, 17, 34. And your Texas two-step. 4, 15, 27, 28, bonus ball, 19. Welcome back, 454, another animated show for kids hits theaters this weekend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Wake up, buddy, it is walk o'clock. The Super Pets are here to save the box office. The animated DC League of Super Pets hits the big screen this weekend. Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart voicing Crypto and Ace, the dogs of Superman and Batman. I'm not really great with animals. Keanu Reeves voices the Cape Crusader saying, don't expect a movie about his own pets. I have some fish, Does that, I, but I don't feel like they're pets. I feel like I'm just kind of the, ten, tending them. <laughs> I'm tending the fish. And... Uh, the superpower they have. I don't know. I mean, they're alive. DC League of Super Pets will battle Nope for the top spot at the box office this weekend. 
The Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon won't be out until later next month, but HBO gave a first look this week at the show's premiere in Los Angeles. And show co-creator Ryan Condal says the series about a house divided reminds him a lot about what's going on in the U.S. today. Uh, about a, a place that was once the shining city on the hill in America, and it feels very divided from within. And I think I think there's a there's a, 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 a wistfulness and a tragedy in that. And I think I think you'll see some of that mirrored in the drama that plays out in House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon hits HBO August 21st. Six times the charm for Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Luke Bryan. The trio returning again as judges on American Idol. Their sixth straight season in the seats. Host Ryan Seacrest also coming back. Auditions start next week. And celebrated documentarian Ken Burns with a birthday today. He's 69. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. <laughs> 456, 78 degrees. And believe it or not, there are parts of the country dealing with a lot of rain right now. Too much, in fact. Ahead on GMSA, a look at the areas that are under a flood emergency. And a look outside with the road. Well, no, not yet. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to show you the roads in just a second. Plus, if you're not happy with recent changes on Instagram, you're not alone. What the social media app is doing now to fix customer complaints. And the head on GMSA at 6, the monarch butterfly visits San Antonio every fall, but now they're on the endangered list. Sarah Costa will tell us what we can do now to help save the species. Now let's look at the roads Yay. outside. There you go. Sarah Spivey's here. She's going to tell us if there's anything Yay. going on. Welcome, welcome. Applause, Spivey. <laughs> oh, wow. She said that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> there we go. Now it is Friday. Come on, Sarah. We'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Two people are dead after a shooting at an apartment near a Southside High School. Details coming up. And as we deal with high heat and drought conditions here, other parts of the U.S. are under a flood emergency this morning due to heavy rain. And outside with live can, none of that going around here, although Steph has a great story to tell us about <laughs> rain. <laughs> Like an old tale. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It is Friday, July 29th. All right, Steph. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yes, it really happened. I saw rain briefly. It must have been five minutes driving wow. from my mom's house back home. And I was surprised. I was like, what is that? What's that noise? I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's rain drizzle. Wow. See, it can happen. Yeah, it really happened. Yeah, and, and some folks will do that again. But once again, if you hear that little noise, remember, that's rain, even though we haven't seen it. Because like I was saying, last time I heard it, I was like, yeah, what is that? Now? Yeah, so don't be surprised by it. Uh, most of us, unfortunately, won't see rain today, but we do have slightly better shot at some. 79 right now, that bottom number, dew point, and that's uh, basically the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, that has gone up compared to yesterday, so there is some more humidity out there. However, the nice thing is, you know, a couple of those little glitches kind of squeeze that sponge, and so at least we got some moisture to be squeezed out. 100 for a high temperature, of course, that is very dependent upon the cloud cover like was the case on Wednesday. A couple of more clouds. We stayed just barely below 100. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local municipality about your watering restrictions and mold and pigweed are both on the low side. All right, we've got enough humidity out there, of course. Uh, one thing, by the way, before we get into the uh, heat index, uh, we're going to have a little more Saharan dust coming in here this weekend. So it starts to work its way in here later on today, and it'll be on the uh, the light side this weekend and then getting on out of here. So warm and humid, some clouds around this morning, and then a couple of showers around. Again, 100, give or take. A few more clouds, you stay just below that, but that's kind of the, the benchmark we are looking at. I mean, that's where we, that, that's the, the number we shoot for, and then up above or below that. And then this weekend, heat goes on, and uh, even though this is going to be kind of a uh, hit or miss, about uh, triple digits, pretty much a sure bet this weekend, unlike the uh, lottery. And then uh, next week, new month, same weather, yep, even gets hotter. All the details for the weekend and what to expect for the month of August, or at least the first week of August that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the woman that keeps us sane, Sarah Spivey. <laughs> I don't know how I do, but thank you. You do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we only have a couple of things to talk about early this early this morning. I want to sh start off here with the maps. First thing to note is that on the uh, east side of town, there's been some construction on I-10 westbound right before you get to 1604. The good news is if you're coming inbound from, let's say, Seguin, that construction 
has come to a close. And so we've actually started to see uh, the roads improve. But the left lane of I-10 westbound was closed earlier. Right now, though, things look great. This is 35 at New Braunfels. You can see that traffic is flowing. 410 at Callahan also flowing just well. But of course, if anything changes, we'll be the first to let you know. For now, just travel safe on those roads. Enjoy the morning and make sure to fill up before those gas stations get pretty crowded. People are going to be buying those lottery tickets. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Now to some late breaking news this morning. A double trouble at a south side apartment complex. Two deadly shootings. Officers found the bodies of two men after answering a call about gunshots at the complex. It's in the 1700 block of Pleasanton Road near West Gerald. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, do police have any idea who killed them or why? Now, those are just some of the questions they're hoping to answer. Now, police say that they did have reports of two people who were running from this area earlier, but they told me that they're not sure whether those people were actually involved in the shooting or perhaps running because of the fact that uh, they, they, were, they heard the gunshots. Now, this is where police have been focusing their attention, this stairwell here uh, by Building 28. These are the, the Union Pines apartments. Uh, police say that they found one man at the top of the stairwell, another one inside the breezeway uh, around three o'clock this morning. They had gotten a call initially about gunshots in the area. Then that call was upgraded as someone saw the bodies lying there, that there had been an actual shooting. Police described those men as either being in their late teens or early 20s. They say they're not even sure at this point if they live at this apartment complex, but uh, they are trying to get whatever information, whatever, whatever evidence they can about this double shooting. Both of those victims died as a result of their gunshot wounds. And again, police say two people seem running from the scene, but they're not sure whether they're suspects in this case or if they were just running because of the gunshots. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, we now know the name of a woman killed in a deadly shooting near Fort Sam Houston. We first told you about it yesterday morning here on GMSA. Now, according to the Bear County Medical Examiner, the victim is 33-year-old April Longoria. It happened around 3 a.m. yesterday in the 2000 block of Harry Warsbach Road. Authorities say Longoria was shot in the upper body and she was pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities say five people were in that area when the shooting happened. Two of them were detained as witnesses. The Terrell Hills police chief told us they were still searching for two other men who left that crime scene. An official at the scene says the Texas Rangers are taking over the investigation. We have some new developments in the Uvalde shooting investigation. Just a day after publicly defending her response the day of the shooting, the principal for Robb Elementary will return to work. The district placed Mandy Gutierrez on paid leave earlier this week, and now the district says they reached a mutual agreement and will allow her to return to the district in, quote, an administrative capacity, end quote. It wasn't clear if she would return as a principal, but Gutierrez's lawyers released his statement saying that Mandy Gutierrez is, quote, fully reinstated to her position, end quote. This week, she defended herself, saying she did not use the PA system the day of the shooting because she was trained it would cause more panic and harm. She sent an alert through a Raptor app to teachers' phones instead. Gutierrez also insisted the lock on the door to classroom 111 worked, though it may have needed more force used to engage the lock. The district's police chief, Pete Ordando, remains on leave. And this morning, historic floods hammering the heartland are turning more deadly. Severe weather is now blamed for at least eight deaths in eastern Kentucky. Torrential rain also returned to St. Louis overnight as the police department said one section of the city was submerged in seven feet of water. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, St. Louis, Missouri, underwater for the second time this week. Flash floods inundated the area after heavy rain, trapping people in their homes and submerging cars. Firefighters carried six children to safety from this flooded daycare. Authorities say one section of St. Louis was submerged in seven feet of water. The deluge comes just two days after storms dropped more than a foot of rain in parts of the city. To the east, Kentucky declared a state of emergency as devastating flash flooding washed away buildings and stranded residents. Got a family trapped in a home, standing on the counters, water's almost over the counters, and they have no more, there's no way for them to get any higher. In parts of eastern Kentucky, floods and mudslides destroyed dozens of structures. Everything's going like 
Everything is gone. Kentucky's governor activated the National Guard to assist in the rescue efforts. He says the flood waters coming in the middle of the night Wednesday, catching many off guard. The governor says he expects the death toll will rise. I do believe it will end up being one of the most significant, uh, deadly floods that we have had in Kentucky in at least a very long time. It comes as extreme weather grips nearly every part of the country. A powerful tornado touched down near Buffalo, New York. 115 mile winds ripped through this barn as the twister left a trail of devastation 10 miles long. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Hi. It is now 508 and 78 degrees. And still ahead, why Instagram is pausing the rollout of some of its newest features. And outside with live cam, little bit of rain around San Antonio. Stephanie Cerner was one of the lucky ones. Did you play the lottery since you got the, no. the rain? Since luck is on your side? No, I didn't. Well, hmm. well, you got, I mean, the thing's tonight, right? That's true. I have time. 1.1 billion? Mike's back with your forecast coming up. Welcome back. 12 minutes after 5 o'clock, a massive two-alarm fire destroyed a multi-story home and ripped through a nearby mechanic shop late last night. This happened on the city's southwest side, and our Jonathan Cotto is there live with the very latest. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. This is actually a story that we first brought to you on the night beat last night. We know San Antonio Fire Department quickly arrived to the 2500 block of West South Cross Boulevard, close to 845. And if you can take a close look behind me, there isn't much left of the mechanic shop that was affected by this fire and also the two story home here that was completely burned to the ground. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like late last night around 8:45, we know upon arrival firefighters went on the defensive as flames fully engulfed the home windy conditions also posed a challenge and threatened to spread the fire to neighbor neighboring structures we had an opportunity to speak with san antonio fire department's pio public information officer joe errington this is what he had to say it was a, um, a heads up effort on our, our first arriving crews part to get to get up uh, downwind from it to keep it from the fire from spreading. We did have some some uh, small grass fires in neighboring uh, backyards and things to this where, where large embers were blowing to them, but uh, kept it from spreading to any houses. Now we know San Antonio Fire Department called for support. CPS was also on scene considering that the electrical wires were also uh, affected by this fire. Uh, coming back out live, I can tell you the good news here this morning is that no injuries were reported and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Reporting live from the city's southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now 513, 78 degrees. Coming up next, how two of the biggest companies, Apple and Amazon, are dealing with the state of the economy right now. All right, the reason why your dishes aren't as clean as you like isn't your dishwasher, it's the detergent. I recommend Cascade Platinum, and in your routine, let's watch it work. Cascade Platinum uses Dawn as a built-in pre-rinse system. It rehydrates dried on food, lifts it off, and breaks it down for sparkling clean dishes the first time. Okay, who wants to start? Just scrape, load, and we're done. Cascade Platinum, scrape, load, done. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. Whenever heartburn strikes, get fast relief with Tums. It's time to love food back. Tum, 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 Tums. Does your plug-in fade too fast? Try Febreze Fade Defy Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. In today's Tech Bites, forget about those changes to Instagram. The site is rolling back modifications, such as increasing the video content displayed to users. The pause comes after Kylie Jenner and other stars complained that the changes made it look too much like rival TikTok. Amazon and Apple are hoping investors will feel reassured and confident after both posted better than expected quarterly sales. Both companies say that despite rising prices, they're managing to control operating costs. 
The announcement sent their shares way up on Wall Street. People who pay for Twitter will soon be paying more. The subscription price for Twitter Blue is going up from $2.99 to $4.99 per month. Subscribers get extra features like customized icons and navigation bar. They also get a time window to reverse tweets before they are posted. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. Speaking of having a great day, how about a great day on the roads on a yeah, Friday? Yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed and check in with Sarah Spivey. Well, guys, just as you said that, we do have a crash to report. This one, 410 southbound at Somerset. Let's take a wide view here of the TransGuide cameras. You can see that there's plenty of lights, uh, flashing lights. Looks like first responders are on the scene. Now, as I take a look at the map here again, this is on the southwest side. The 410 southbound lanes right at Somerset. We are not seeing any major backups at the moment, but that could be changing fairly shortly. So I'll continue to keep you updated on that crash. Meanwhile, uh, closer to downtown San Antonio, there is a stalled vehicle on 35 right at that I-10 intersection. But thankfully, that car is on the shoulder, so we aren't seeing any uh, any kind of backups from that. But of course, I'll be keeping an eye on this crash right at the 410 southbound uh, areas at Somerset. More on that coming up. Mike, how are those the weather looking today? I think I know. I've been looking at those forecasting models. No. We've got a yeah. small chance for rain today. Um, the clouds help, though. Yeah, the, the clouds did help. Now, like Wednesday, clouds kept the temperature yeah. just below 100 officially out there at the airport. Uh, that's going to be the situation today. Yesterday, we squeaked out 100. So that's kind of the, uh, I guess the benchmark is the best way to describe it. You know, you get a few more clouds, won't hit 100. But, yeah, that that's almost become... Seems like the normal these days, if you will. And uh, yeah, some awesome clouds yesterday. It is nice to see. It just helps to block that just searing sunshine out there. And we do have a couple of them that are developing as of right now. Day number 48. And if you are uh, keeping track, and of course we are fast approaching second and first place. And if everything goes as forecast, we will hit um, 57 days next Saturday and then 59 days then that following Monday and it looks like it's mm, I don't want to say a sure thing but close to that 79 right now uh, same thing Stinson Pleasanton up there Canyon Lake the warm spots plenty of humidity this morning when you get these numbers two points well up into the 74 75 degree range that's kind of steam bath when you step outside so we do have the heat index readings in a lot of places well up into the low 80s right now we'll have some morning clouds hanging around here and then again that sort of you know back and forth Depending on where you live, a couple of more clouds this afternoon, a little bit more sunshiny in places, 90 at noon, and then 100 for a high temperature, and 20% chance for a couple of showers. Obviously, we get one of those showers over the airport, a few more clouds, we won't quite reach 100 degrees later on today. This is what the uh, computer models are indicating, this rapid update model, which I think is doing a pretty good job depicting the one or two showers, perhaps even a clap of thunder out there, majority off to the east, even one or two of them uh, trying to pop up out there to the west later on this afternoon. And then after today, and if this, some of these try and last into the early evening hours, that's pretty much going to be about it. Uh, as far as cloud cover right now, we're not really seeing too much yet, but we'll see more developing. You know, we had that story about some of the flooding up there in and around the, uh, the Tennessee Valley area and also St. Louis, uh, Mississippi Valley. The same storm system that moved through there moved through Kentucky and now huge. If you've got any uh, flights that are going through Memphis by chance, boy, a bunch of rain there and it looks like that's the same situation again going in through the Tennessee Valley and that's all sort of related to our weather because if you look at how all this is moving straight west to east and then you've got this big clockwise rotation right there, that same high, which is preventing anything around here except for hot temperatures basically, is pretty much taking all of that moisture and throwing it across the, the mid-south area, Tennessee Valley. And so, yeah, same thing that's keeping us hot and dry is keeping them way too wet up there to the uh, north and northeast of us. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 100. Again, a couple extra clouds out there. We stayed just below 100, so it's going to be a, you know, it'll be a close call at times. But then over the weekend, uh, odds are in your favor. If you like triple digits, that will be seeing a lot more of those. And then new month, basically same weather, except for the fact it will get hotter as the first few days of August roll on.
don't okay. know that I like them, but I'm getting used to them. I was going to say, I like that you said if you like the triple digits, here they are. Yeah. Yeah. Are we getting used to it or just tolerating it? Seems like it happens every day. So. I know. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more every day. It's all right. Yeah. We're going to make it. Lots of water. We're going to make it. 522, 78 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a Hollywood star talks about Jordan Peele's Nope script. Plus, how both It Snows All the Time and Purple Hearts are tackling major medical issues. And some lottery numbers as we go to break. Pick three, five, four, seven. Fireball is two, and the daily four is seven, one, four, four. Fireball is seven. Cash five, eight, 15, 16, 17, 34. Your Texas two step, four, 15, 27, 28. Bonus ball 19, and don't forget about the Mega Millions tonight. Welcome back. It is 526. Joining the cast of the current number one film of the U.S. was a no-brainer for at least one of the stars. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Stephen Young says he was ready to leap into Nope as soon as he read Jordan Peele's script. It was like, of course. You know, of course Jordan would be this deep, this this layered. Um, and then also have the ability to take people on a great fun ride as well. Um, I think that that's the deft touch of a really special director. Something isn't right. Okay. He got up before we could finish the scan. I want to go home. I just want to go home. Brett Cullen and Leslie Ann Warren star in It Snows All the Time, about a family coping with its patriarch's Alzheimer's diagnosis. The drama, inspired by a true story, opens in theaters this weekend. If we do this, then we have to make this look normal, like a real marriage. Gives you a year of free health insurance. A struggling singer-songwriter and a troubled Marine fake a marriage in Purple Hearts so she can afford insulin for her type 1 diabetes. Star Sophia Carson says she was happy to bring attention to the real-life issue. You know, so many young people who have type 1 diabetes who literally can't access the insulin that they need to wake up every single morning. Purple Hearts debuts this weekend on Netflix. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Some interesting entertainment. I know, with all the medical issues. Yeah. Time now, 527 and 79 degrees for now. Still coming up on GMSA, some economists say the U.S. now in the start of a new recession. While the Biden administration says that's not the case. Plus tonight's the big night for Mega Millions, and the jackpot has grown even bigger than earlier this week. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the pause on federal student loans could end next month how you can get ready for that. Coming up. President Biden down. Homicide investigators are looking into not one, but two deaths at the Southside apartment complex. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 79 degrees for now. And Mike says there might be a chance of rain for some people today, but don't get too excited about it. You got a little bit of rain. I was hoping you might like collect some in a glass or something and bring it in for show and tell on Monday. <laughs> well, I was driving one. So okay, I didn't well, you could have to... stuck it out the well, window. And then I wasn't prepared. It's not like I had like, you know, jars in the, in the, in the you know, passenger seat and like roll down the window. Like, let me catch some rain. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun to see, though. <laughs> it would have been fun uh, to yeah, see. I brought my jar of rain for show and tell. This it was is what neat. it looks like. It was neat to see it coming down, though, Mike. Yeah, great to see it. Uh, you know, some folks got a little brief lawn watering, but unfortunately, and you know, I, I hate to say this, but it didn't really do any good as far as the, the overall need for more rain. And that's going to be the situation today as well. There will be a few more showers out there. Some folks will get maybe a little bit of free lawn watering. But uh, yeah, we need just a whole bunch and we're not getting it anytime soon. Uh, 79 right now, that number dew point has actually gone up. So it is more humid when you step outside this morning. And as you can see, we do have a couple of those clouds that are already starting to form up. So heat index readings right now. 
now mid upper 70s, low 80s, uh, Stinson, Pleasanton, Port SA, obviously through the airport in the warm spot right now. Gonzales as well as Canyon Lake, both feeling like 83 degrees and mold and pigweed are on the low side. Update account comes out in a couple of hours or so. 100 again for a high temperature later on today. That 20% chance for a couple of showers out there, you know, one or two. Keep a glass handy. If you're driving, don't stick the, the glass on. Keep both hands on the wheel. But um, yeah, we want to try and collect as much of this as possible. It's not going to be a lot. After today, pretty much rain chances are out of the picture. What's the weekend going to be like? Last weekend, July, August starts Monday. Any changes with the new month with flipping the calendar? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Sarah Spivey is in this morning. Good morning. What's Good going morning, on? Good morning, Mike. I feel like I'm cheating because I already know the forecast for the day today. <laughs> so I already know the answers to those questions you just asked, but we'll hold off a bit. Hey, there's only one crash here on the southwest side of town right here on the eastbound lanes of uh, of 410. You can see clearly that there is a little bit of a backup. This is at Somerset right now. So traffic is starting to back up 235. So if you have to travel along the eastbound lanes of 410 on the southwest side, just be prepared that there is a crash there at Somerset. This is what it looks like on the scene right now. You can see that there are plenty of flashing lights. First responders at the scene. That, however, is our only crash in the city. Other Otherwise, inbound times around the San Antonio metro area look good. Coming in from Bernie along I-10, 24 minutes. Coming in from Seguin along I-10, 29 minutes. In from uh, New Braunfels along 35, 25. And not even much of a backup along 281 from Bulverde to downtown San Antonio. So other than that crash on the southwest side, things are flowing smoothly. I'll continue to update you on that crash. See how far back that traffic uh, can go along to it. Uh, long 410 rather on the southwest side. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We want to update some late breaking news happened overnight. Some people on the south side are waking up to a deadly scene right outside their doors. Police have roped off part of an apartment complex in the 1700 block of Pleasanton Road near West Gerald. And that's where they found two men shot to death. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand both victims were shot multiple times. Yeah, that's what police tell us, that they found multiple shell casings here, and each victim was hit several times by gunfire. Now, this has been going on since about 3 o'clock this morning. Right now, we have the medical examiner here, so we're going to be very careful about what we show live here on the air. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see the scene as police arrived. They initially got a call about shots fired. Then that call got upgraded with people saying they could actually see victims of that shooting. Police arrived. They found two people, two men either in their early 20s or late teens uh, down in the uh, stairwell area of, of this apartment complex. They say one person was at the top of the stairs, the other in the breezeway. Uh, police do not know why they were shot or if they even, even live at this apartment complex. They say that uh, witnesses told them they saw two people running away from the scene, but the sergeant told me that he's not sure whether they were running because they were connected or to the shooting or whether they were running because of that gunfire trying to get away from it. That is one thing they're investigating and they are still searching for anyone who may know more about this shooting. But again, two people dead either in their late teens or early 20s as a result of a shooting here this morning. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to a local murder mystery that's baffled investigators and the victim's family. Last week we told you about a woman's body that was found outside an abandoned home. Now we've learned the victim is 19 year old Gloria Martinez. Police say she was stabbed, then wrapped in blankets and stuffed into a bin outside that empty home on San Luis Street. So far, there are no arrests in the case. There's a memorial at the location now, and it continues to grow. In the meantime, her family members are trying to pay for the funeral while dealing with losing their loved one. Family members say Martinez was living with her father until he was recently hospitalized. She was then living in the home alone. Is the U.S. in a recession? The Biden administration says no. However, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, many experts and expert economists disagree. As millions of Americans struggle with inflation, President Joe Biden remains confident about the country's financial footing. Our job market remains historically strong. Our economy created more than 9 million jobs since I came to office. 
Despite those findings, the U.S.'s gross domestic product dropped for the second time in as many quarters, according to Thursday's report from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. New data confirmed what a supermajority of Americans already knew. Democrats have plunged America into a recession. Some economists say two consecutive quarters of negative growth signals the start of a recession, but there's no official definition, and Biden's top economic officials deny the U.S. has reached that threshold. Our economy remains resilient. Our unemployment rate stands at 3.6 percent, household finances are strong, and industrial output continues to grow. Biden has another reason to be optimistic. Senate Democrats have come to an agreement regarding a $369 billion energy and climate bill backed by the White House. It also contains health care provisions, but it faces stiff opposition from Republican lawmakers. They want to use the middle class economic crisis they themselves created as an excuse to raise your taxes and ram through their Green New Deal nonsense. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The director of the U.S. Secret Service delaying his retirement as the agency faces questions over missing text messages. Director James Murray says he wants to oversee the agency as it cooperates with ongoing congressional and other inquiries. Congress and the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General want the Secret Service to explain why it deleted some text messages from the day before and the day of the Capitol riot. The Inspector General has launched a criminal investigation into the matter. Officials have said the text messages were possibly deleted when the agency conducted a data migration of phones last year. While lawmakers were trying to hit home runs, a group of protesters proved to be a loud distraction. This happened during the congressional baseball game at Nationals Park in D.C. yesterday. Some of the protesters held banners to draw attention to their cause, which is climate change, and they want Congress to pass legislation to address climate issues. However, the protest did not last long. Police gathered up the signs from the group, and at least three of the protesters were arrested for entering the park without permission. The congressional baseball game has been a tradition for more than a century. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot now worth even more this morning. The lottery announced the prize has risen to $1.1 billion. Yes, that's with a B. That is the second largest jackpot in the 20-year history of the game. If someone wins tonight, the cash value option will be worth $648 million. The odds of winning about one in 300 million. Wow. Good luck. Chances of rain, a little better than that, maybe. One in 200. <laughs> well, it rained on you, yeah, so we know it right. works. Yeah. 540, 79 degrees. And still ahead, now Southwest is changing a policy that gives customers more power when it comes to flight credits. And outside with live cam, it's going to be another hot and humid day. Probably going to reach 100 again today. We're used to it. We know it's coming, so just get prepared. Water, sunscreen, light clothes, and a hat. And snow cones. That too. <laughs> and welcome back. It's 542. In your morning consumer headline, Southwest Airlines is upping the ante in terms of flexibility for customers. The carrier now says flight credits will never expire. Under the previous policy, they expired in a year. And Southwest says customers can get flight credits when they cancel reservations more than 10 minutes prior to departure time. Now that goes along with the airline's policy to not charge change fees when customers reschedule flights within the same time frame. Credits issued under the old policy retain their expiration dates. The new policy applies to credits issued from now on. Nestle says it hiked its prices by more than 6% in the first half of this year. The world's largest food company says it raised its prices the most in North America with a 9.8% increase. Nestle says rising costs for commodities, packaging, freight, and energy weighed on its operating profit margin. Despite higher prices, the company grew its organic sales by more than 8% over the period. That growth was driven by strong demand for its Purina pet food products. Soaring global inflation has pushed up costs for the world's biggest manufacturers, and those costs then get passed on to consumers. Mm, everything's going up. It is. Time now, 544 and 78 degrees for now. Outside with Trans Guy, we know there was one accident a few minutes ago. Sarah Spive is going to update on that and how it looks elsewhere around town.
Welcome back. 547. That's right. And it's been summertime and a lot of prices have gone up, but the gas prices Ooh. have been interesting. Let's go yeah. ahead and check in with Sarah. They were headache high about a month ago and now they're still pretty high. But I want to take a look at the average gas prices around uh, Bear County. So take a look at your screen. If you can find a gas station this morning, if you got to fill up and the price is below $3.68, go there because the average price around Bear County right now is just shy of 370. But a month ago, that gas price was closer to four dollars and fifty cents and it's much more expensive than a year ago when gases gas prices were about two dollars and seventy five cents a gallon so pick up a mega millions ticket and fill up if that gas price is less than 368 this morning. Now there is one accident that we need to talk about on the southwest side of town. We've been talking about it so far this morning. Eastbound lanes of 410 right at Somerset. You can see that traffic is backed up all the way to 35. So not too much of a backup there, but enough to cause a headache if you're on the southwest side. Again, the eastbound lanes of 410 right at Somerset. You can see those flashing lights. First responders are on the scenes. All right, I'm gonna stretch my millennial muscles here get out that smartphone. Here's that QR code this morning. Make sure to scan this and you'll continue to see uh, some updates on that crash there on the southwest side of town if you need to. So I stretched those muscles. Did that sound good? Yeah, that's good. We, we got the code. David, let's stretch our boomer muscles. Some of us boomer wish we had muscle. millennial muscles. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. As long as you stretch. That's all I got. You're good. Come on, us baby born. Come on, we gotta stick together. Oh, what do you got? What do you got? Stretching wise. Can you? I, okay, I, boomers. I went, I went like this. Yeah. That? So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a pretty picture here. Yes. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> and, uh, David. <laughs> 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 Gorgeous after some much needed rain. So some folks did get a little bit of rain yesterday. Um, obviously, it I, I don't mean to downplay it. We'll take anything we can get, but not enough to really help out that significantly. If you get a little free lawn watering, yeah, that's going to be fantastic, and that's going to be the situation. Now everybody off camera is stretching right now, by the way. Uh, we have some clouds that have started to show up this morning. All right, once we go into the weekend, we've been dealing with this every once in a while, a little bit of uh, Saharan dust, and that's going to start to work its way on in here we've got a plume in the Gulf of Mexico and that's going to be moving in overnight and tomorrow so you may see a little bit of that kind of that haze out there and it's going to enhance the the sunsets especially tomorrow night and then also going into Sunday and it looks like this little plume should be getting out of here then later on in the day on Sunday so it'll just be uh, kind of paying us a, a bit of a, a weekend visit 82 is what it feels like right now when you factor in the humidity same thing over there Castroville Stinson and 83 up the road at Canyon Lake. We will have somewhat of a heat index to deal with later on this afternoon. You know, the humidity usually goes through that kind of 24 hour cycle. It's higher in the morning, drops down somewhat in the afternoon, but we'll still keep enough around here to make it feel hotter than the actual air temperature. 90 at noon and then going for 100. That's kind of the uh, the the benchmark, if you will. And if you keep more clouds around, we stay lower than that as opposed to going for the normal high temperature and you know having anomalies from that. So this seems to be almost the norm these days hitting triple digits give or take a couple of degrees and that 20% chance for a few uh, showers out there later on this afternoon. Here's what's going on. The humidity, yeah, drops down, but it is going to be staying up just enough to keep the heat index so that 100 is going to feel like 103, 106 Pleasanton, and then we're looking at uh, 105 and beyond that or higher than that right around Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Catula. So yeah, you definitely got to take it easy. And again, computer models are Showing a couple of these showers, obviously you can probably count them on one hand. Basically some light rain, maybe an okay shower here or there, clap of thunder perhaps uh, thrown on in. And then after that, that's pretty much going to be about it. And take a look at the week. By the way, on Sunday, that number is going to go up to 97. So this is the hottest period of the year historically when the normal high temperature is 97. That lasts through the 16th of August. And look what happens as we go into the month of August. We go from this little shade of pink into this kind of blisteringly purple shade there, lavender shade, which just means it's going to be getting hotter as the uh, the week rolls on. Next week, we're looking at some low hundreds around here. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today, 100. Again, a few more clouds, kind of like was the case on Wednesday. We stay just below that. A few showers out there. A few folks like Steph got a couple of showers yesterday. 
couple more around the area today and 100s all the way through the weekend. Again, we'll continue to those numbers right underneath the, uh, the days there. That's the total number of triple digit days we've seen or will see so far this year. If the uh, forecast holds and it looks like it's pretty much a sure thing just about so 55 by next Thursday. So by next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we will tie for second place next Saturday and then the following Monday which would be the eighth, we would be in first place. Wow. We're tying for first place for the most triple digit days in a year. Going for gold. <laughs> what do we right. get? Is okay. there like is there like some kind of Yeah, prize have we determined that, any sort of a uh, prize right. that we all get? You know? uh, I guess we can make pretty graphics saying we, we got first. We get to justify all the, the sweating and <laughs> we can buy yeah. ourselves ice cream. And I like celebrate. that idea. We endured Again, the eternal optimist over there, so <laughs> 553 79 degrees and you can forget about the high price of gas and drive as fast as you want when you get behind the wheel in a trio of new racing games we're going to show you a special look next and it's looking at some lottery numbers remember it's mega millions tonight 1.1 billion but you might have won something last night pick three five four seven fireballs two and your daily four seven one four four fireball is seven Cash 5, 8, 15, 16, 17, 34. And your Texas two step, 4, 15, 27, 28. Bonus ball, 19. Good luck. There's no need for gas, or physics for that matter, in Forza Horizon 5 Hot Wheels. The game features customizable race courses using those familiar snap together Hot Wheels track pieces. The game is out now for PC and Xbox. Three, two, one. Go, go, go! On the opposite end of the game graphics spectrum is Formula Bit Racing DX. The game eschews high octane graphics for a 90s arcade racer aesthetic and is playable on Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo consoles. For more retro racing action, there is 80s Overdrive. The game's pixel art style evokes the 16-bit graphics era and features a track generator and pulsing synthwave soundtrack. Previously playable on PC and Switch, gamers can now floor it on the new Xbox version of the game. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The Hot Wheels game looks pretty cool, but it doesn't beat the real thing. Still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, summer energy bills are skyrocketing. We'll look at why and what's being done about it. Plus, historic flooding turns deadly across the Midwest, and now St. Louis is facing a second major disaster this week. And also coming up after the break, KSAT's Katrina Weber is live at the scene of a double shooting early this morning. She will bring us the latest information she has out at the scene coming up. And as we go to break, you're looking at Loop 410 and Somerset. Just one accident happened about an hour ago and it's uh, starting to have uh, some effect on the traffic this morning. Sarah Spivey is here. She's got an update on that and the rest of your look at traffic. And Mike's got your forecast coming up in the next hour of GMSA. We'll be right back. This morning on GMSA, a deadly double shooting near a Southside High School. Katrina Weber joins us live in just moments to tell us what happened. And a home is in ruins after a massive fire that also jumped to a nearby mechanic shop. We've got another look at that damage. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 78 degrees for now, but some people will have a chance for rain. We're going to check in with Mike very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, July 29th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Very exciting because some people saw rain yesterday. A few oh. people will see rain today. Although, Mikey said, don't get too excited. Overall, it's going to be hot. Yeah, it'll still be hot. I mean, if we get a couple of clouds hanging around here, uh, like on Wednesday where it kept temperatures just at 99 yes. instead of 100 officially, you know, that's going to be the, the case today. But 100, give or take. And yes, rain would be nice to see, but you didn't know what it was at first, did you? No. <laughs> it was it's like, a, yeah, it happened to me yesterday. I was driving from my mom's back to, you know, my house, and I was like, what is going on? And there was it was rain. Yeah, and that's going to be the, the case today. If you get one of these showers, it's like, 
oh yeah, that's what that stuff <laughs> is. So, but again, they're going to be a few and far between. Uh, start to see a little bit of a uh, kind of a glow out there, sort of in behind the clouds of the uh, the sunrise. Sun's not going to be coming up for about 45 minutes or so, 45, 50 minutes. 82 at the airport. That's what it feels like with the humidity, which is actually slightly higher this morning than what it was yesterday. 83 at Stinson Canyon Lake and 82 is the uh, heat index at Castroville. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side and throughout the day temperatures. Now with the extra humidity, clouds pretty much going to be staying steady at this point. And this is pretty much where we have been about three, four degrees above the normal average low temperature 75 every morning within memory and we'll make it up into the uh, upper 80s 90 at noon still some clouds hanging around here decent breeze as well out of the southeast and then later on today yeah again 100 or slightly above slightly below depending on cloud cover in your backyard and a couple of showers out there later on today although they will definitely be few and far between last couple of days of july coming up this weekend what is in store what's in store for august details in just a few minutes traffic authority right now the one the only Sarah Spivey. Wow, what an intro. Thank you there for that, Mike. Yeah, we do have one crash to talk about that we've been talking about for the last couple of hours. Uh, actually, 410 at Somerset, the eastbound lanes of 410 at Somerset. You can see the flashing lights of first responders there on the scene. That is, again, on the southwest side of town. You can see right here, traffic is backed up slightly along 410, uh, right around that I-35 intersection. You can actually see on 35 northbound uh, to a 410 eastbound. We're starting to see a bit of a backup there. So if you have plans to travel along the southwest side of town, there is one crash. Now the good news is just got information from uh, folks at Transguide. A lot of the morning construction, the overnight construction is starting to get picked up, particularly 410 Ingram area. So that is good news. Elsewhere, traffic is flowing smoothly. Inbound from Bernie to downtown uh, San Antonio, about 24 minutes, a bit of a slower roll of it from Bulverde along 281 to downtown San Antonio, about a 28 minute drive time. And if you're planning on traveling in from New Braunfels, uh, I-35 southbound to downtown San Antonio, 25 minutes. Otherwise, things are flowing smoothly out there. Of course, if there are more crashes and more tie ups this morning, we'll continue to keep you updated. David Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Up to some late breaking news that we've been following all morning. Homicide detectives have to double their efforts now to solve a South Side murder case. That's because there are two victims, two people found shot and killed this morning at a South Side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is live in the 1700 block of Pleasanton Road near West Gerald with that story. And Katrina, what have you learned about the victims? The police told me that they are two men, either in their early 20s or possibly late teens. They were found dead here in the stairwell area of this uh, apartment complex, this building here behind me, around 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, beyond that, police don't have any information. They don't know even if these victims lived here in this apartment complex. But let me give you a look at the video so you can see how they have been investigating this now for several hours. The police originally got a call about gunshots in this area. Then uh, they got a call a few minutes later later that there actually were victims of that shooting. That is when they arrived here at the Union Pines apartments and found uh, those two people dead in the stairwell area. One person at the top of the stairs, the other in the breezeway. Uh, police say, uh, again, they don't know if those two people live here, but they did have reports that there were two men running from this area uh, at that time. Uh, police still don't know if those are possibly uh, the shooters who were involved in this case or if they were running because of the gunfire running away in fear. So that is one thing that they are trying to find out about this case, well, along with a whole list of others, including who those men are, who shot them, and why. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. One person is in the hospital this morning after a crash involving a motorcycle, two cars, and a truck. Police say it happened near 410 at Ingram around 11 last night. A motorcycle tried to pass a black SUV and sideswiped it. That forced the SUV into another lane where it was T-boned by a white SUV. The collision caused the black SUV to roll over before it was hit again by a pickup truck. One person was taken to the hospital and the driver in the truck was detained for possible DWI. This morning, we now know the name of a woman killed in a deadly shooting near Fort Sam Houston. We first told you about it yesterday here on GMSA. And according to the Bear County Medical Examiner, the victim is 33-year-old April Longoria. 
It happened around 3 a.m. yesterday in the 2000 block of Harry Wurzbach Road. Authorities say Longoria was shot in the upper body. She was pronounced dead at the scene. And authorities say five people were in that area when the shooting happened. Two of them were detained as witnesses. Terrell Hills Police Chief told us there were still searching two, for two other men who left the crime scene. An official at the scene says the Texas Rangers, they're taking over the investigation. Overnight, a massive two alarm fire destroyed a multi story home and ripped through a nearby mechanic shop on the city's southwest side. Fire crews were called around 845 last night to the 2500 block of South Cross Boulevard. At the scene, firefighters say flames fully engulfed the home. Windy conditions also posed a challenge and it threatened to spread the fire to nearby buildings. SAFD called for more support and CPS energy crews cut the power on the block until the flames were under control. The fire didn't spread to neighboring homes, but it did reach a mechanic shop next door. It was a, um, a heads up effort on our, our first arriving cruise part to get to get up uh, downwind from it to keep it from the fire from spreading. We did have some some uh, small grass fires in neighboring uh, backyards and things to this where, where large embers were blowing to them, but uh, kept it from spreading to any houses. So. No injuries were reported, but damage to both structures was significant. Firefighters say the home is a total loss, and the mechanic shop is expected to be a total loss as well. The rest of the fire was contained. Crews stayed on the scene overnight to make sure the flames were out. We have new developments this morning in the Uvalde shooting investigation. Just days after publicly defending her response the day of the shooting, Mandy Gutierrez will return to work as principal for Robb Elementary. The district placed her on paid leave earlier this week, and now the district says they reached a mutual agreement to allow her to return to the district in a, quote, administrative capacity. It wasn't clear if she would return as a principal, but Gutierrez's lawyer released his own statement saying Mandy Gutierrez is, quote, fully reinstated to her position. Wednesday, she defended herself saying she did not use the PA system the day of the shooting because she was trained it would cause more panic and harm. She sent an alert through a Raptor app to teachers' phones. Gutierrez also insisted the lock on the door to classroom 111 worked, though it may have needed more force to engage the lock. The district's police chief, Pete Ardondo, remains on leave. The summer Texas heat combined with skyrocketing fuel prices are showing up in our electric bills right now. The costs are up across Texas, and there's a few factors according to an energy expert. The first is increasing cost of natural gas, more than double this year compared to last year. On the electric side, energy providers are having to pay a higher premium because of the volatility of the ERCOT market. Now, that means CPS Energy is paying more to buy electricity from ERCOT. The only saving grace consumers have is conservation. The first and best thing a consumer can do is to conserve. Uh, the kilowatt hour that's not used is one that you don't have to pay for. The gallon of gasoline, the gallon of diesel that you don't use is one that you don't have to pay for. And energy experts say there's no indication that Texas lawmakers have any plans to help improve our electric grid or lower prices. This morning, millions of people across America are saying, show me the money. Not yet. And the Mega Millions lottery is now over a billion dollars, and that's got everyone talking ahead of tonight's drawing. KZ12's Jonathan Koto is live this morning at a store that's seen some lucky winners in the past. Morning, Jonathan. Did you buy your ticket show yet? <laughs> Good morning. Show me the money is exactly right. I haven't purchased my ticket, but let me tell you, I do know that last year, a lucky winner purchased a ticket right here at this popular food mart located on the 1400 east of South Cross Boulevard, playing a $200 cash, uh, 200 million cash price and won $5 million. And it was bought right here. So maybe I'll purchase my ticket here right after this live shot or right when they open. But let's throw up a graphic and let's talk about this lotto fever. We know that 1.1 billion lottery prize will be on the line tonight as numbers are drawn for the Mega Millions game. That giant jackpot is the nation's third largest prize and is the result of 29 consecutive drawings without anyone matching all of the game's six numbers. Now, the last time someone hit the Mega Millions jackpot was April 15th before rushing out to spend $2. Now, let's keep that in mind before rushing out to spend $2 on a ticket. 
Let's keep in mind that the odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot are a staggering one in 302.5 million. So the 1.1 billion prize is for the players who get their winnings through an annuity paid annually over 29 years. Nearly all winners take the cash option, which for tonight's drawing is an estimated $648.2 million. Now coming back out live, if no one wins the jackpot, that just means the prize will be even larger ahead of Tuesday's drawing. So make sure to get your tickets and uh, play your chances. So reporting live from the city southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. You're supposed to yell in the phone, aren't you? Kill me, the body. <laughs> we know you got good odds. You got rain. <laughs> yeah. So odds work in your favor. So maybe. one maybe. to 300 million or whatever. Right. Maybe I'll have a chance there too. <laughs> I don't nice. know. Better chance of rain, probably. <laughs> It's 6, 12, 79 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, monkeypox cases continue to rise as demand for the vaccine skyrockets. How the FDA is responding to make sure that Americans have enough doses. Also coming up after the break, we're just over 100 days till the November election. And the post office says they can make it easier for you to use mail-in voting. We'll look at their plan next. And taking a look outside with live cam, there is a chance of rain, but very, very, very tiny for a very few people. We'll take it. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 616 now. We are getting closer to the November elections and now a new federal division is expected to help with mail-in ballots. The Postal Service has created the Election and Government Mail Services Division to help address questions or issues more quickly. Each state receiving guidance this week. In Texas, new rules led to confusion among some voters earlier this year. They had to register to vote and provide their Texas driver's license number or last four digits of their Social Security number. But that's not something people were required to do when they registered years ago. So for those people who didn't have a number on file, their applications were denied because they didn't match the information they gave on the application for the mail-in ballot. Some people applied multiple times before finally receiving their mail-in ballot. Cases of monkeypox are approaching 5,000 across the nation. Here at home, San Antonio has seen 13 cases. So now the focus is shifting to the limited supply of vaccines for the virus. The state health department received more than 14,000 doses this week. 5,000 of those doses were sent to Dallas, which has seen the most cases in Texas with over 100. In Vera County, vaccines are limited to people who had direct contact with a case of monkeypox. Now the illness is spread by skin to skin contact, contaminated clothing and linens. In California, the mayor of San Francisco announced a state of emergency after doses of the vaccine ran out there. In response, the FDA has green lit a facility that will make nearly 800,000 more doses for the entire nation. On Capitol Hill, the waiting game continues for people paying student loans. The moratorium on federal loans is set to end next month. The President Biden hadn't decided on whether he'll approve another extension. One expert says now is the time to pay and be proactive. Scott Buchanan with the Student Loan Servicing Alliance recommends you call your loan service first. The company handling your loan may have changed or you may need to reset or cancel auto pay. But Buchanan also says it is best to pay now if you can. Because every dime you pay today is going to cover principal payments, as opposed to normal times when it's covering a mix of principal and interest. Buchanan says when the moratorium does end, borrowers will have flexibility that includes waiving late fees and delaying reporting late payments to credit bureaus. And time now, 618. There's still that accident out there at Loop 410 and Somerset Road. Let's go ahead and check back with Sarah Spivey. That's right, guys. Slow to clean up that accident there, that crash rather, on the southwest side. Let's take a look at that crash zooming into the southwest side. Right at the 410 eastbound lanes of 410, right at Somerset, that traffic has been backed up to 35, but it does look like it is improving. We can actually see it here on the trans guide cameras. Again, those flashing lights off in the distance, but first responders are quickly responding to that scene. I want to take a look here at another view on uh, Trans Guide. This is 410 Calabria area. You see some flashing lights here. That's not actually because of a crash. They're actually picking up the overnight construction there. So that is good news, even though you can see that there is a bit of rubbernecking there. Again, 410 on the west side at Calabria. They're starting to pick up uh, that uh, construction. Take a look at these inbound times. 
Inbound from 35 along uh, 35 from New Braunfels, about 26 minutes there. Inbound uh, along I-10 from Bernie. Good morning, Bernie. It'll clock you in about a 24-minute drive time. Otherwise, things are flowing smoothly out there this morning. We'll, of course, continue to keep you updated. David and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. So some people may see a shower. You? Yeah. Well, I you, saw it yesterday. You got, I don't you know, got I don't know about yesterday. today. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. some people... Uh, Perhaps a slightly better chance for a couple of uh, showers out there. Now, don't get really excited about it because, again, the majority of us, unfortunately, are not going to see anything as far as any rain today. But we're all going to be seeing some hot temperatures, and there's no end in sight really for that. 79 right now out there at the airport. Same thing, Gonzales, and 80 down the road in Catula. That top number... 2.73, that's actually up slightly, meaning there's some more humidity out there this morning compared to the past couple of mornings. And uh, take a look at this picture. Absolutely beautiful. And these folks were some of the lucky ones after a quick little shower and then a beautiful sunset to end a Thursday. What a tranquil, pretty picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. Okay, we've, we're seeing these little waves kind of coming on in here. They're not really anything you know, to write home about that much, but this is why we're seeing just a couple of showers here and there. We had one of them move through yesterday, and if you, if you almost kind of squint right here, there's a little bit of a wave that's going to be moving on in, and that's what's going to give us the chance for a couple of showers. Again, not a great chance, 20% uh, at best, and even by mid-afternoon, we'll start to see one or two of these popping up, and that's going to be the case through late afternoon, going in toward dinner time and into the early evening hours. Again, just one or two of them out there, and it's, yeah, you might have an okay shower, but it's not going to be any sort of a, a, a big drop brick or anything like that. And then pretty much after that, rain chances, I think are out of the picture completely. We'll be in the low 80s this morning and then getting up into the upper 80s by late morning. Still some of the clouds hanging around here, some of these morning clouds, and then a little more sunshine. But again, it's going to be sort of that mixture of sunshine and clouds like the past couple of days. There were enough sitting over the airport Wednesday, kept us at 99. Yesterday, we squeaked out 100. So that's what we're shooting for again today. 100, a couple more clouds, days in the upper 90s. That 20% chance for a few showers out there later on today. So we've got still the, the high pressure, which is pretty much extending and covering most of the southern portion of the country. And this is going to stay pretty much in place. We get it's not right over the Gulf. That flow coming around it is sending these little waves on in here today, but then that pretty much comes to an end as the high sort of wants to build back in here and stay in place all the way in through then next week. And then one problem that we're going to be looking at too is we go into next week and temperatures are going to be warming up as we head in toward, say, Tuesday, Wednesday and the latter part of next week. Great way to start August. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 100. A couple of showers out there. You get a few extra clouds. You stay maybe in the uh, just the upper 90s. Most folks, though, won't see any rain. And then again, after today, like I said, I think rain chances are pretty much out of the picture. We stay in the hundreds and then get a little bit hotter than that. So we'll continue to chalk up the triple digits for the year. Make it into the 50s. Looks like we hit 50 tomorrow. I like how you put your records up there. <laughs> I, I, I liked hearing that even though I know it, it, you meant you were counting the 50s, but for a moment it made me feel, oh, we're going to be in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Just, we will be in me... the 50s as far as the number of hundreds. Right, so. right. Thank you, Mike. Raymond. 623, 79 degrees. We'll be right back. This is the moment for a treatment for moderate to severe eczema. Sabinco, FDA approved. 100% steroid free, not an injection. Sabinco is a once daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And Sabinco helps provide clearer skin and less itch. Sabinco can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers, serious heart-related events, and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with JAK inhibitors. This is the moment, but we've only just begun. Speak with your doctor about Sabinko today. An innovation from Pfizer. 
It is 626 and 78 degrees. And still to come at 630, we're going to have the latest details on a deadly shooting near a Southside High School. We're going to be live on the scene next. And deadly flooding is hitting states across the Midwest, dropping feet of water in places like St. Louis. The details are next in your morning headlines. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking there at I-37 at Southeast Military, where there are a few vehicles on the roadway now for this Friday morning. We're going to be checking in with our Sarah Spivey, who is in for Stephen Cavazos after the break. Homicide investigators are starting the day with a double murder case. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Those victims found here at the Southside apartment complex. I'll tell you more about it. Also this morning, severe weather continues to plague the Midwest and one major city is dealing with historic flooding for the second time this week. And here's a look at the sun coming up. It's cloudy, which is always a good thing to start the day. If those things just hang around like throughout the day, it would help a little bit, but uh, up a lot. Chances are <laughs> they won't. Good morning. It is Friday, though. That's the good news of the day. Yes. <laughs> Best news we've heard all week is this Friday. I think so. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Yeah, we hope those clouds stick around for just a little bit because when they do, it, you know, it really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, because we always talk about how temperatures are taken in the shade. So if you're on the direct sun, obviously that's heating you up. You walk across, you know, the grocery store parking lot, something like that, and that sun's just beating down on you. Clouds did stick around on Wednesday, just enough to keep us officially at 99 as opposed to 100. But then, and some folks had a lot of clouds sticking around yesterday, not enough over the airport, so we did hit 100. And that's going to be the situation again today. A few more clouds, you stay down a notch or two. But yeah, a lot of morning clouds hanging around here, and it is slightly more uh, humid, slightly warmer than what it was yesterday, 79, and then dew points at 73. That was down around uh, 71 and even 70 upper 60s the past couple of days, so more of that humidity has come on in here. However, in this case, with a little bit of a disturbance moving on in, that's going to once again give us a chance for some rain. Actually, a little bit better than what it was yesterday and the day before that. 82 is what it feels like out there at the airport right now. 83 Stinson as well as Canyon Lake. Uh, mold and pigweed both on the low side. Updated count's going to come out in about an hour or so. So warm and humid. Got some clouds out there as usual. A few showers. 100. Again, depending on cloud cover today and most of us unfortunately won't see any rain and then the weekend the heat does go on to sort of paraphrase Sonny and Cher. Can you see <laughs> Spivey like that one and then we go into next week new month same weather. Well, not exactly the same because it's going to be getting hotter than what it's been this week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Yep, Sarah Spivey is at the wheel this morning. What's going on? Good morning to you, Mike. Yeah, we do have a crash to report. Now, that crash that was on the southwest side of town, 410 and Somerset, has cleared. So that's some good news. Just getting information in now that there is a crash on the westbound lanes of Highway 90. It looks like the shoulder is blocked as you're coming right into downtown downtown San Antonio. So keep that in mind. We're not really seeing much of a backup yet. Meanwhile, on the southeast side of town, there is a stall on the northbound lanes of I-37 at Southeast Military. We can actually see this stall here on the trans guide cameras. You can see that the northbound lanes of 37, a bit of rubbernecking there from this stall. Again, the uh, northbound lanes of 37 as you're coming into downtown San Antonio, you can see the stalled vehicle there. Otherwise, things are flowing pretty smoothly out there. Good morning to you, Bernie. If you're coming in from the Bernie area along I-10, know that it's about a 24 minute drive. If you're coming in from Bulverde along 281 southbound lanes, about a 26 mile, uh, minute drive. And then from New Braunfels to downtown, about a 26 minute drive as well. I'll have more details on that crash on 90 westbound as you're heading into downtown San Antonio, uh, rather as you're leaving downtown San Antonio in just a bit. And and I'll have the latest on local gas prices around the city. So if you're planning on heading out early this morning and filling up, you'll want to stick around for that too. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. The work day has yet to start for most people, but San Antonio homicide detectives already have a full day ahead as they investigate a double murder. Police found two people shot to death at a Southside apartment complex overnight. Katrina Weber has been following the story all morning. She now joins us live from 1700 block of Pleasanton Road near West Gimble. So Katrina, do they have any leads yet? 
Well, based on what police told me, it sounds like they have very few clues. Now, they told me there were reports of two people running from the stairwell area right after the shooting happened. But they say they're not sure if they were running because they're suspects or if they were just scared. Now, the original call came out uh, around 3 this morning. Police say what initially was reported as shots fired in this area quickly developed into calls about two gunshot victims. Officers arrived. They found one man at the top of the stairs, the other in a breezeway near a building here at the Union Pines Apartments. They say both of them were dead after being shot multiple times. And again, they have not found the shooter just yet. The police just left the area within the last half hour. We also had the medical examiner here uh, to collect evidence and also remove the bodies. They will be making a positive identification on those victims at a later time. In the meantime, police told us that they appear to be either men in their early 20s or in their late teens. Reporting live from the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. And topping your morning headlines, historic floods hammering the Midwest. Severe weather is now blamed for at least eight deaths in eastern Kentucky. Torrential rain also returned to St. Louis, and overnight the police department said one section of the city was under seven feet of water. It's the second flooding disaster for St. Louis this week. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, St. Louis, Missouri, underwater for the second time this week. Flash floods inundated the area after heavy rain, trapping people in their homes and submerging cars. Firefighters carried six children to safety from this flooded daycare. Authorities say one section of St. Louis was submerged in seven feet of water. The deluge comes just two days after storms dropped more than a foot of rain in parts of the city. To the east, Kentucky declared a state of emergency as devastating flash flooding washed away buildings and stranded residents. Got a family trapped in a home, standing on the counters, water's almost over the counters and they have no they, there's no way for them to get any higher. In parts of eastern Kentucky, floods and mudslides destroyed dozens of structures. Everything's gone, like everything is gone. Kentucky's governor activated the National Guard to assist in the rescue efforts. He says the flood waters coming in the middle of the night Wednesday, catching many off guard. The governor says he expects the death toll will rise. I do believe it will end up being one of the most significant, uh, deadly floods that we have had in Kentucky in at least a very long time time. It comes as extreme weather grips nearly every part of the country. A powerful tornado touched down near Buffalo, New York. 115 mile winds ripped through this barn as the twister left a trail of devastation 10 miles long. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. On Capitol Hill, the Biden administration says the U.S. is not in a recession, but some analysts and critics disagree. As millions of Americans struggle with inflation, the U.S. gross domestic product dropped for the second time in six months. Some economists say two consecutive quarters of a shrinking economy signals the start of a recession. But there is no official definition, and President Biden says he's confident about the country's financial footing. And this morning, one thing many people are looking forward to, the Mega Millions drawing tonight. Several San Antonio area stores have turned customers into instant millionaires in the past year with winning Texas lottery tickets. Our Jonathan Coto joins us now live with the latest on Lotto Fever. It's hot. Boys and <laughs> one out there. It is hot and the fever is definitely going around. A lot of people purchasing their tickets, trying their chance at winning this jackpot. We know it's been growing and growing, but let's throw up a graphic and really get into it. We know there's some lucky spots out there. I know last year uh, an individual won uh, $5 million from a ticket playing the $200 million cash prize. So we know there's some lucky stores. It's just a matter of finding the right one. But any event, $1.1 billion lottery prize will be on the line tonight as number are drawn for the Mega Millions game. The giant jackpot is the nation's third largest prize and as the result of 29 consecutive drawings without anyone matching all of the game's six numbers. So the last time someone hit the Mega Millions jackpot was April 15th. Before rushing out to spend two dollars on a ticket though, keep in mind that the odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot are a staggering one and 302.5 million. That's 
That's a lot. That is staggering. So the $1.1 billion prize is for players who get their winnings through an annuity paid annually over 29 years. Nearly all winners stick to cash option, which for, for tonight's drawing is an estimated $648.2 million. So if no one wins tonight, that just means the prize is going to continue to grow ahead of Tuesday's drawing. Now, if you want a list, you can head on over to our website, uh, ksat.com, for an interactive map of all the lucky or quote unquote lucky store locations. So get your tickets and play your chances. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Good luck out there. Yes. 639, 78 degrees. Coming up after the break on GMSA, the Monarch Butterfly visit San Antonio every fall. However, now they're on the endangered list. Sarah Costa will tell us what we can do now to help save the species. Welcome back. It is 643. The migrating monarch known to stop in San Antonio every fall as they travel to Mexico were officially put on the endangered species list last week. So what can we do now to help save the monarch? Sarah Acosta spoke with a foundation that's been sending out free seeds for over 20 years for plants that monarchs feed on. And they say it's more crucial now than ever. The migratory monarch butterfly is subspecies of the monarch, known for migrating from Canada to Mexico every fall, is now endangered. That's two steps away from extinction. The population has declined by 90% in the past two decades due to climate change and pesticides, according to federal scientists. So what can be done to help? Plant more milkweed. Milkweed is the monarch's prime food source. Extreme weather events and pesticide use has killed a massive amount of natural occurring milkweed in North America. It's why since 2000, the Live Monarch Foundation has made its mission to send out thousands of free seeds across the country. You're the one who's going to take the seed and plant it. I can't plant 10,000 gardens every month, but I can give people the seeds to make sure that they can plant 10,000 gardens and do that start. A post from the foundation goes viral every couple of years, saying if you send one self-addressed stamped envelope to Live Monarch, they will send you free seeds back in the mail. The foundation does do this, and since the news broke about the monarchs being endangered, they are getting thousands of requests daily. There's always somebody asking um, for free seeds every day in, in the mail, but just a little bit. And then Friday, uh, it looks like it's about 50 to 100 times that volume. Singer is asking for people to go to their website instead of sending them envelopes, make a small donation for the seeds, and send in an online order to help their small staff of less than five people keep up with the requests. Let's save on postage and let's save on trees. Don't cut down a whole forest to send us 10,000 envelopes when you could send a few. So we try to um, get that message out too. Based on your area, they send you native milkweed seeds. In South Texas, you can start planting those seeds now so they can get their roots in place by the fall and they will go dormant in the winter. But that way, come spring and the following fall, they will be ready for those migrating monarchs. Singer says rather than just throwing them in a field, make sure to plant the seeds under half an inch to an inch of soil, water often, cover in mulch, and also avoid using pesticides in DEET in your garden because this can kill monarchs. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. A lot to do. And watch them when they're driving down the road. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. That's pretty to see. Yeah. Let's go ahead and check in with Sarah. The, a stalled vehicle, I believe, there at I-30. Southeast military. That's right. We're going to get to that stalled vehicle here in a second. But the first thing I wanted to talk about this morning is gas prices. You may need to fill up on your morning commute. So the average gas price around Bear County, $3.68. If you can find a gas station cheaper than that, go for it. That is that would be a good deal. You may want to pick up a Mega Millions ticket too. Now compare this to a month ago. Gas prices are down quite a bit. A month ago, gas price average was about $4.50 a gallon, but compared to a year ago, gas prices are up quite a bit. A year ago, it was $2.74 a gallon. So if you see that magic number below $3.68 a gallon, 
you're good to go. Go fill up. All right, let's talk about a crash. We do have a crash on the westbound lanes of uh, Highway 90 as you're leaving downtown San Antonio. Uh, we're not really seeing much of a backup there, but really the shoulder is the only thing that's blocked there on that uh, what those westbound lanes of Highway 90. Meanwhile, as Stephanie was mentioning, I-37, the northbound lanes there at Southeast Military, we're still seeing that stalled vehicle. You can see that some folks are actually working to get that vehicle uh, under stuck on the roads, but these are the northbound lanes of 37. Usual traffic this morning with those inbound lanes, but also we're seeing a bit of rubbernecking because of that stall. So please use caution. This morning you get two meteorologists for the price of one. <laughs> Meteorologist Mike Osterhage, what can we expect in the weather today? Well, a couple more showers, so I guess it'll make this, if they get another shower, this herd happy. Look at the smiles on their faces. Yep, brief rain shower and then a beautiful sunset after that. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Got some some clouds hanging around here this morning and yes it is more humid than uh, what it has been the past couple of mornings now we have the chance for some rain today but then over the weekend looks like and actually kind of starting overnight tonight into tomorrow another little bit of saharan dust is going to be moving on in here so that's going to be sticking around tomorrow and then also going into sunday and as the day rolls on on sunday it's not a not a long event as far as this uh, latest batch of Saharan dust, but that'll be sticking around and then hopefully getting on out of here then by later in the day on Sunday. So just over the weekend temperatures are in the upper 70s right now with the cloud cover with the extra humidity. They're not going to be dropping down all that much and then we make it up obviously through the uh, 80s uh, later on this morning and we'll have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. So uh, 100 is kind of the the benchmark we're looking at and depending on the cloud cover like Wednesday, it's a just below 100. Yesterday we squeaked out 100 degrees, so that's going to be the situation today and also that 20% chance for a couple of uh, showers out there. So of the four of us in the studio, one person saw a shower yesterday. Miss Stephanie, and that's going to be the case today. Just one or two of them out there, uh, even computer models, you know, uh, yeah, a couple of them, count them on one hand. Um, a decent little shower at times, but not any sort of a drop breaker, obviously. And this is going to last in through dinner time and into the early evening hours. Again, most of us, unfortunately, will not see anything as far as any rain today. Here's a look at the uh, satellite picture. And yeah, you can start to see this little darker shade of gray. It's kind of hard to pick up, but that's some of those low clouds that are showing up. Big problem up around the uh, Mississippi, Tennessee valleys with a heavy, heavy rain. St. Louis over toward portions of Kentucky and then another huge batch is working its way in through straight from Arkansas. Look at all that moving straight west to east and put a kind of a, a hub right there on top of us and spin at the center of a wheel and that's that high sitting right there. So that's what's keeping us high and dry and then all that rain is kind of circulating around that clockwise rotation around that high and that thing is for all intents and purposes not going anywhere. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. One or two showers out there today. 100 again, depending on cloud cover, a few more clouds. We stay just below that. Then fewer clouds coming in here this weekend. And so triple digits pretty much pretty much a sure thing all the way through and then actually add to that. So as we change the month, same weather, but it will get a little bit hotter. Well, August is supposed to be hotter, but I guess not this not much. this hot. Hotter. So, okay. yeah, 97 normal high temperature. We're five above that at least by the end of the week. All right, we'll we'll tough it out, Mike. Time now, 6:51 and 78 degrees for now. Toughing it out all summer. No <laughs> and here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA with KSS Jonathan Cotto. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. There are two serious issues our military men and women are facing right now, and that is unemployment and underemployment. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you exactly what we mean by underemployment and what resources are available for our transitioning men and women and military veterans. And a quick look outside with a live cam this Friday morning. Look at those nice clouds to keep things not so hot. Let's hope they stick around. We'll be right back. Oh, 6.54, before you go, let's get a final look at traffic. 
Yeah, thanks guys. Again, just a stalled vehicle, 37 uh, northbound lanes here. Let's take these graphics so you can see 37 northbound right as you're uh, coming into downtown San Antonio at Southeast Military. Stalled vehicle there. No big traffic backups though, and we do have a crash on the westbound lanes of 90 around downtown San Antonio. Again, this is as you're leaving San Antonio. No major backups there. Otherwise, traffic is flowing pretty smoothly around San Antonio. Of course, we'll start to see that pick up here a bit uh, as we head into the rush hour. But other than that, things are fine. So and the rain today, huh, Mike? Well, maybe a little bit of rain. We got a lot of clouds hanging around here like we've had the past few mornings. It's actually slightly warmer, bit more humid when you step outside. So these mid and upper 70s kind of, you know, add about two, three degrees to those. And then throughout the day, 90 at noon, going for 100 for a high temperature. And of course, that's dependent on clouds. Like was the case on Wednesday, a couple of more clouds kept temperatures down. Yeah, so you're going to be right around 100. Nice breeze out of the southeast and then one or two showers out there. Unfortunately, most of us won't see any rain. We're going to continue to rack up triple digit temperatures as we close out July this weekend and start August. And it's actually going to get hotter as we go into the middle of next week. Well, we will enjoy the lower triple digits this weekend. Then. Yes, any little bit helps. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9. In the meantime, Good Morning America is coming up next. Have a great day.